Hey friends, it's Curtis Robinson with Conway Toe to Toe and Toe to Toe Firearms and Training. I wanted to make a little video talking about the difference between some of the parents that I see in our organization. So nothing about the kids. This is an interesting video, I think, because I really am um, I'm focused on and thinking more about parents and parenting and some of the interesting behaviors that I've noticed in kids. So um, probably most of my viewers are going to fall into one of these couple of categories and you're going to be either delighted that I recognized you, I recognized the category or the behavior that you seem to identify with, or you're going to be mad and you're going to be offended that I've said things that for some reason um, you just you don't think are fair. I'm okay with all of that. I want you to comment. I want you to also go ahead and subscribe to this channel uh, so that you can see uh, other additional things that I might comment on in this video, but also that you can get an opportunity to see some of the other things that we do. Let's talk particularly about kickboxing and jiu-jitsu. And when it comes to what we do, we teach a very self-defense focused program. So we're teaching kids from age four to age six at about 4.15 in the afternoon. Then we teach the seven to 12 year olds, plus or minus, uh, in the five o'clock program. And then the mature teens, you have to be about 100 pounds at a minimum, uh, but the mature teens and adults we teach from six to seven. Of course, we also have some other classes, some MMA classes and some other uh, wrestling classes and stuff that are typically in a category by themselves. But let's talk about that mom or that dad that wants to put their kid into martial arts. And I think that this is, it's cool as a business owner that I can look at these categories. It's cool as an instructor that I can kind of look at the child and I see a lot of the parent in the child. Um, so again, I hope nobody takes great offense. Uh, and again, I am going to call a spade a spade. I am going to walk you through kind of the things that I see. So the first thing that I want you guys to realize is that um, for whatever reason that you bring your child to come and train with me, I'm grateful. Uh, I think we really do change lives. In fact, in our logo, it, it literally has, you know, toe to toe, changing lives through martial arts. It's part of our brand. It's part of our logo. Uh, I didn't create that. My instructor, Matt Avant, created that. He gets all the credit. And um, I think we do change lives. So what do I see most often? Parents call me up on the phone and they say, hey, yeah, uh, I saw something on social media or I saw your Google page or I saw, you know, this out of the other or, or even, hey, my friend recommended you and I wanted to get my child into martial arts. And I'm like, great. Yeah, we do that. Happy to train your child. And they say, well, can you tell me a little bit about it? And I'm like, well, sure, we have a kickboxing and jiu-jitsu program every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. It's roughly one hour long, and on Mondays and Thursdays, we're teaching kickboxing. Tuesdays and Fridays, we're teaching jiu-jitsu for the function of uh, a well-rounded program. Uh, for most people that don't know, that is mixed martial arts. It's something you do standing up. It's something you do on the ground. You mix them together. Uh, two days of kickboxing, two days of jiu-jitsu make a nice, well-rounded fighter. But when it comes to self-defense, what am I really trying to do for these people? I want them to be able to do something if they're standing up and they have a chance to use footwork and move away and throw a few punches, throw a few kicks. Uh, or if somebody grabs them, tackles them, or knocks them to the ground, trips them, or they fall and somebody jumps on top. I want them to be able to do something from the ground. So from a self-defense standpoint, what I teach really, in my mind, makes the most sense. So here's the interesting thing. The parent will call me and they're like, okay, uh, can, can my kid just come one, one day a week? And I'm like, one day a week. Okay. Well, I'm just curious. Um, what is your kid currently doing? Oh, well he does swimming and he does track and he does basketball. Uh, and really we only have one day a week that's available, but I want to get him into something. And I'm just scratching my head, you know, I'm like, you know, holy cow, this kid is going to have a great and amazing opportunity to do a lot of things. But number one, they're going to be, they're going to be tired uh, and they're not really going to be focused on any one particular thing. They'll be a little bit familiar with a lot of things and not particularly good at any one thing. 
So of course I always tell them, yeah, sure, you can come one day a week. And here in my mind, I'm thinking, what am I gonna give this kid one day a week? Um, the answer is not much. I will get a child that's four years old to learn to stand in a line and pay attention. If that's all I can teach them, I will get them that at a minimum. Some kids adapt really quickly and I can teach them how to roll, how to fall. I can teach them how to kick, how to punch. Uh, and even one day a week, they kind of, you know, they, they, they're, um, they are mentally and physically just capable kids. Some of those kids are like that. Um, they're easy to teach. Let's just put it that way. Some kids are not. Some kids, they don't know, they don't know anything about their body. They're wobbling around. They can barely even walk. They don't stand still. They've got a lot of ADHD going on. When I say ADHD, even if they're not diagnosable, they're looking around. They can't focus. They're easily distracted. By the way, I'm not diagnosing. I'm just kind of using ADHD loosely as doesn't focus well. And at four years old, I'm sure I was a crazy man. I didn't focus well. So anyways, here we are. We have this one parent and they're trying to get their kid exposed to everything and the kid's not good at anything, uh, and it's just a mess. So I invite him. Yeah, you know, we, we offer a full week of martial arts uh, at no charge just to test drive the program. So I, you know, come try two days of kickboxing, two days of jujitsu, and just tell me what you think. Like, well, you know, like I said, our schedule is really busy. I don't know if we could do more than one day. And I'm like, well... How about in the summertime, think about us, you know, try to come more often and, and see, you know, uh, see if maybe more martial arts is kind of the thing if you got the time. Otherwise, bring them one day a week. They're like, all right, well, how much is one day a week? And I'm like, we don't even have a program for one day a week. Uh, they're dropping. Just come by anytime you want, 15 bucks, just drop in. And they're like, okay, yeah, that sounds pretty good. So no contracts? Nope, just come by, put $15 in the box. We'll train them. We'll get them right the best way we can, give them some activity. Meanwhile, in my head, I'm thinking the kid's probably already somewhat physical in nature if they're doing swimming and track and basketball already. They're already getting some physical fitness, so that's pretty good. That's good for them. I'm going to add to their physical fitness capability. We're going to do push-ups, we're going to do sit-ups, and we're going to do squats every day just warming up. We're going to give them flexibility drills, and it's something I can give them, but it's, it's not much. There are a few of those parents who will say, um, well, you know, I really want my kid to get good. I mean, how, how long will it take them to get good? And I'm like, at one day a week? Um, it's going to take a long time. And here's the best metaphor that I give them. I say, uh, by chance, did you ever play piano or guitar? Um, you know, any of those things, uh, dance or ballet. And usually these parents who have their kids in everything have done something. And the ones that have played piano, I love talking to them and using this metaphor, but I can adapt the metaphor for just about anything. I say, uh, how many days a week did you practice piano? Oh, well, I mean, when I was first taking piano, you know, my mom, my mom, I mean, I was going to class, you know, getting a lesson a 30 minute or a one hour lesson every stinking day. Then I had to practice every day. And I could tell it was grueling for them. And that might be why they've got their kids doing a little bit of everything rather than focusing on one thing. I said, ah, and did you get good? And they're like, well, I mean, actually, yeah, I mean, I, I ultimately still play and I love playing piano and I've done a few gigs or in some cases I, you know, I was in the orchestra if they were on maybe a violin or something or I was, or maybe cello. Or maybe I, you know, did something else with a band, you know, I was on keyboard or whatever else. All right. So what do you think? Do you think that if they are dedicated to martial arts the way you were dedicated to piano, would they get better just quicker? And of course, the parent always says, absolutely. And I said, okay, well, I'm going to tell you that your basketball coach, your track coach, your swim coach are all thinking the same thing that I'm thinking, which is, I don't get to see the kid enough. They're not going to be great. They could be great, but they're not going to get there very quickly. They're going to probably become disinterested. They're going to ultimately gravitate towards one thing. And I want them to do that, whatever it is, which includes if they're really good at basketball, let them do basketball and do basketball full time. If you want to come see us in the off season, come see us in the off season. 
And the parent sometimes brings the kid anyways, and they might like it, and they might want to stay, and they might go two days a week, or they might move up to four days a week, but whatever the situation is, I mean, I'm looking at, I'm looking at the, the big picture thinking, what can I give a human being one hour a week? It would take them a lifetime just to really get good enough at anything that I could teach them. You know, we're just looking at a simple throw, the sheer number of repetitions that you have to get, you know, practicing with somebody to get a, a simple throw, like a shoulder throw off, uh, or a simple arm bar in jiu-jitsu or in kickboxing, just a front kick, you know, is a lot of repetitions. Uh, Bruce Lee was famous for saying, I wouldn't fear a man who knows a thousand kicks, but I would fear a man who practiced one kick a thousand times. It's just kind of something to think about. Um, and I've, maybe I have, uh, maybe I have paraphrased that a little bit. So by the way, if you're a big Bruce Lee fan and you've got the exact quote, go ahead and share it, type it in below. That'll be helpful. All right. So that's parent number one, the parent that wants the kid to do everything and the kid can't focus on anything. And you can even see it in class. They are typically, they might have some physical capability because of the other stuff that they do, but they aren't focused. Parent number two is on the way other spectrum. This is the parent that comes to me and sometimes they're broken hearted. The second parent calls me up and says, um, yeah, I uh, was recommended your company uh, by a friend of mine and um, I want my kid to get some self-defense lessons. And I'm like, okay, we do that. Absolutely. We've got kickboxing and we've got jujitsu program, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. How old is your child? And they say, oh, well, my child is, let's say, eight. I'm like, yeah, that's the five o'clock program. We'd love to help them out. And then the parent just goes into the story. And it's a motivating and powerful story for me as the instructor. Well, you see, my, my, my kid's been, been just, man, just, you know, I hear him stuttering and stammering and struggling. My, you know, they... How do I put it? My kid's just been bullied a lot. I understand. And then I really start listening. And they'll say something to the effect of, you know, my kid is just, uh, he's a good kid. He's a good boy. Or in some cases, she's a good little girl. And kids just, it seems like no matter which school she's in or what grade she's in, there's always a kid picking on him. Interesting. There's something to be said about personalities that draw bullies towards them. These are the meek. And again, if you're a religious person, you know, it says in the scriptures that the meek are going to inherit the earth. These are the good people, the sweet people. Um, that doesn't mean we can't be warriors. Uh, that doesn't mean we can't train a lamb to be a lion. Uh, we can do that. But again, these are good kids that don't need this bullying in their life. And the parent is at their wit's end. Um, I love helping these people. And some of these people say, Mr. Robinson, they come with their hat in their hand, you know, humble. Mr. Robinson, I don't even have, I don't have, I'm scared to even ask for these classes, how much they might cost. I just don't have a lot of money. And the first thing I tell them is bring them, just bring them. We'll talk, we'll work it out. You and I will work it out. Uh, if your child is in need, we'll work it out. We'll find a way. And we do. If they come, the parent that wants the child to get real self-defense lessons is motivated to come and the kid usually will focus and will be inspired by the parent. You got to learn this. You better pay attention. I'm paying for these classes and, you know, this bully, you know, the school won't do anything about it. The teachers won't do anything about it. I've done everything I can as your parent. You're going to have to do this. It's on you. Once you empower a child to take action for themselves, um, my job as an instructor becomes really, really easy. When I say easy, they want to learn. They want to stay after class or they want to come early before class and they want to do more. They're kicking the heavy bag before class, for example. And these little kids are uh, most times super sweet kids. I mean, they literally are playing well with others. They don't have a bad attitude. They don't have anger issues. They're just a joy to be around. Uh, and they do grow and they do blossom. The interesting thing is, is that in most cases, they never actually fight. Think about that. Why wouldn't a child who's being bullied, who comes to me for self-defense, actually 
never really fall back on or need those self-defense skills. Or I should say maybe rarely. Rarely will they do that. And the reason why is because their confidence goes up. And when the confidence goes up, uh, bullies tend to go other places. Um, in some cases, I've had kids that reported back to me that the bully tried to bully them and they said something empowering. Uh, something as simple as, look, I don't really want any trouble, but I'm not going to be bullied anymore. And that was all it took just to be confident and say something that the bully was like, well, okay, crap, I guess I got to go find somebody else to pick on. In some cases, it does resort, resort to violence and whether the child wins the fight or loses the fight, there is some respect that's gained between those people. And then the other people that saw it gain respect for the person that stood up to the bully. They gain respect in a, in a very interesting way and the child's confidence goes up again and they become even more likable. They tend to be surrounded by more friends, not because they fought, but because they were confident and they showed that they weren't going to be bullied. Uh, it's, it's incredible. It's life-changing in my opinion. So that's the second parent. This is the one, again, very humble, very hat in hand, very I'm desperate for some self-defense, my child's been bullied kind of a thing. There's a third parent. Uh, I love these parents for very different reasons. Each one is different. The third parent, they come to me and they want to know my credentials. That's the first thing. And they're like, um, yeah, so um, where have you trained? Where have I trained? Yeah, uh, you know, what have you done? I'm just curious, you know, what, what are your credentials? And they come at me very aggressively. And I'm like, oh, well, you know. I've been in the military for most of my adult life. I've trained in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. I've trained in El Paso, Texas. I've trained, you know, in Fort Benning. I've uh, been all over the world, you know, in deployments. And my training has consistently been finding the best possible school at the military base or near the military base where I can continue my own training. You know, my initial training as a kid, you know, was in South Carolina, you know, and I've trained in stand-up arts like karate and kempo and, and kickboxing. I've also trained in, uh, you know, jiu-jitsu and throwing arts. So I've done that my entire career. And then they, if they're not satisfied with that, I kind of start smiling because they're they're basically, you know, they, they want to know, am I going to really be a, a self-defense fighter? You know, a fighter, not just an instructor, but am I a fighter? I'm waiting for it. Uh, and again, they're, well, well, you know, have you been in the cage? And I pause and I say, Mr. So-and-so or Mrs. So-and-so, I've fought in every venue known to man. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, uh, I fought in point karate and I fought, I fought in full contact martial arts. Uh, I fought in a no holds barred event in Tampa, Florida. Uh, the Brazilians call it Valley Tudo. It's elbows and knees, punches, kicks. It's grabbing, throwing, choking, arm locks, the whole nine yards. Uh, and I fought in, uh, you know, local, state, and regional competitions. Uh, I've also fought in U.S. Army combatives. I've also fought in the cage myself in both kickboxing and MMA. And last but not least, I fought in the street. And they kind of pause for a second. And I say, there's really only one way that you can know if I'm legit. And I think you're trying to, you're wondering, am I legit? And they're like, yeah, how's that? And I was like, you just come. You come. Bring your child, but you come. You come and train with me, and you'll see. You'll see firsthand what I can do. And I then have taken it, <laughs> taken the ball out of their hands, right? I have dominated the conversation in a way that there's not another question. And a lot of these parents need that. They respect that. They want to know that I'm an expert, for example, if I was a boxer and I said, you know, I've been in the boxing ring and so on and so forth, you know, a person that wants boxing lessons might not care if I've really been in the ring. But if I said, I trained 
Mike Tyson, ooh, and Mike Tyson did well, it resonates. People, people can put one and one together and get two at that point pretty well. Right, and some people do ask me those things. By the way, my group, uh, I've been involved with training people that have been uh, amateur, semi-pro, and pro of different, you know, all different types. We've we've competed all over the world. So again, I'm not touting my own skills, but this is the conversation that I have with these parents, and what they're looking for is they want their kid to be a champion. They don't want their kid to get some self-defense and just be good. They don't want their kid to get a little confidence and you know not be bullied. They want their kid to be a champion. Uh, these are high performers. They want their kid to be a high performer, and there is a, a huge expectation of results. So I give it to them. I've had a couple of those parents that came, and when I just line kids up, uh, they recognize immediately that I mean business. I am militant. When I say militant, you will get in a line. You will stand in the ready position until I tell you otherwise, and then we're going to exercise. And everyone's going to do the exercises that I do. I don't do something that they can't do, and I don't do things that I won't expect them to do. For example, uh, if we're going to do push-ups, I do all 50 push-ups, whether I'm teaching the four-year-olds or whether I'm teaching the 10 year olds or whether I'm teaching the adult program, I do all 50 push ups, and I expect them to do the, as many as they can and use that time wisely. And I show not only the kids, but I show the parents I mean business. This is a kind of a military uh, approach. This is what I did when I was in the United States Army, when I was training soldiers, and so on and so forth. So it's interesting to see these three different paradigms between these three parents. The high-performing parent, the one who's asked me these credentials, uh, they don't care what the price is. They're going to pay it. That's always kind of easy for me. They don't have to really negotiate price and that sort of thing. Uh, and they usually do have their kid come a lot. Here's the challenge with those people. If something shiny or better sounding pops up, they take their kid out of my program and go to another program, and then they realize maybe that was mistaken, and when they come back, I'm like, well, where you been? Oh, yeah, we tried the school down the road. It just wasn't the same. Predictable. Predictable. Uh, they aren't happy. It's not that I haven't done my job. They aren't happy. They got to go look. I don't blame them. Go look. Then come back if it's not in some way a better program. All right. The effect that your attitude and your behavior as a parent has on your kid matters. If you are all over the place as a parent, your child's going to be all over the place. Your experience will translate into their behavior. I got to be honest, I'm a lot like my mom and my dad. I think that probably everyone's going to say, even if they don't want to, maybe they close, you know, they look down at the ground and shame and they're like, yeah, I'm a lot like my mom and my dad. Uh, you don't maybe don't like how they are, but you know that you you are. There's genetic predisposition for that, but there's also this modeling. It's psych, it's psychology, psych 101. You know, we model our parents, and as they are, so are we in many cases. So here's the thing: if you look yourself in the mirror as a parent, and you like what you see, and you project that onto your kid, and you like how they are behaving, well, just keep doing what you're doing because you're gonna keep getting what you're getting, and that's probably pretty good for you. If you know that you are a lamb and you expect your child to be a lion, that's difficult. That's why I'm here. You're going to literally turn them over to me for my role model uh, experience. You're going to want me to show them what a lion looks like. I, I can do that. I'm happy to do that. I'm not asking you to change, but I am saying that I am the man I am, not just because of my mother, not just because of my father or my stepfather, for example, but because of the coaches and the teachers that I've had in my life. And isn't that true with you? You're turning your child over. You're entrusting me with that child to help them develop in a way that, let's be honest, not everybody's a lion. They just aren't. And it's okay. Um, I don't want everyone to be me. Uh, I don't want them to be like me. I'd rather them be you and let me influence them in the way that you want me to influence them. Uh, so again, there is that also. So again, you got the high-performing parent that's all over the uh, that's all over the place. You've got the you know very sweet and meek parent that you know just wants the best for their child, but in the end, they're 
their example is one of uh, timidness, and I see it a lot. And it's okay if you are timid. I hope it doesn't sound like I'm accusing anyone. And if uh, if it seems like I'm degrading anybody, I'm not. I love how you are because you brought your kid and you want me to do something that maybe you're not good at. By the way, if you were already good at martial arts, you're good at self-defense, and you were you know, the kind of person that you, the that was able to teach a child, teach a child at home. You know, you can do that. Heck, I've trained my children. So then there are the other parents. There are parents that they just don't care. They, they literally, God bless them, and I'm happy to help parent for the one hour uh, a day that you give me. I'm happy to parent, but they are not involved. They don't come and watch the kid. They aren't aware at their progress of their progress, and really, in some cases, I am babysitting. Um, I'm happy to babysit and teach your child a system of skills that will be with them the rest of their life. I am happy to do that. I don't feel bad about that at all. But what is interesting is when you do when you drop your kid off and you have no other interaction. Uh, the kid only has what I give them and what they bring to the table. And sometimes it's not enough. Sometimes a child needs to be encouraged by mom and dad. They need to hear that, you know what, son, I noticed what you're doing the other day. And you're doing pretty good, man. You're keeping your hands up, you know. Uh, you, d you took some hits and you were tough. You didn't even phase you. Uh, you gave some good kicks and some good punches. Or you grabbed that kid and you, you threw him to the ground. You pinned him quickly and then immediately went for the arm lock or the choke. Um that is huge for a parent to do if you have it within you, if you can. So I'm encouraging you. I'm not, uh, it's always uncomfortable for me to even bring these kinds of things up, but I'm not attacking you or making you feel like you're not a good parent. You are a good parent because you're bringing your kid. What I'm saying is sometimes a kid needs that extra encouragement. Take, just take the time. Take the five minutes, watch them a little bit, go run some errands, come back, watch them a little bit more, pick them up, and then take them back home. Uh, maybe watch them. We've got a ton of videos out there. Just about everything we do is on YouTube. So you can literally watch the YouTube videos and see how your kid is doing. Even if you just fast forward through it, you take a 20 minute video I put out and you reduce it down to about five minutes and you just pause and slow down the part with your kid and then you just fast forward through the rest. But your involvement is essential for their success. And that is true not only in martial arts, but it's in football, it's in basketball, it's in baseball, it's in swim, it's in track, it's in gymnastics, it's across the board. Even in academics, you should be talking to your kid. If you can in some way, spare the time to talk to your kids about their grades, to talk to them about their teachers, to find out about you know how things are going in their class. It is huge. It is essential. All right. We're nearing the 30 minute mark. I know this has been a long video. If you've made it this far, we're at the end. I want you to type in hashtag finisher. Hashtag finisher lets me know that you watched the whole thing. It's pretty cool. It's good for me. But ultimately, it also alludes to the fact that you had the time to watch, right? That you took the time to listen. Even if you didn't watch the whole thing, maybe you're cooking or you're taking care of some other things, or maybe you're at work and you just got your headphones in and you're knocking out some other things. You're trying to multitask and you're listening to what I'm saying. It shows that you made it to the end and you got the full message. Let's recap extremely quickly. Number one, bring your kid. I don't care what the reason is. Or you come and you train with me as well as the adult. That's even better. Doing things as a family is essential. Number two, I fulfill a role that most parents just can't. And by the way, my parents didn't coach me in Little League or you know, didn't teach me martial arts. They sent me to an expert and the expert made an example. Uh, so just remember that Sometimes we feel like, oh, maybe I'm not a good enough parent. You are a great parent because you are doing this for your child. It's a good thing that you're doing for them. Uh, and lastly, I want you guys to understand that it's okay if you look in the mirror after you watch this video or you at least listen to it and you say, I don't really like everything he said. That doggone rascal. I don't really like what he said. 
but it made me think, if you can do that, then when you look yourself in the mirror, you can say, I am doing the best that I can. I am the best parent I can be. I am giving the most time that I possibly can. And where I have to work or do other things, you know, whatever life requires of you, I am. My kid is now involved with someone who is a professional and an expert and they are growing. And I'm aware of that growth because I've taken five minutes to be involved. Guys, God bless you for making it to the end of this video if you've gone this far. And again, thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, I really want you to do that. If you also ring the little bell, you push that little bell button, then you'll get my notifications when I post new videos. And by posting those new videos, uh, I can keep you informed of what is going on. That's super great. Take care. Continue to take care of those kids. God bless you for all that you do. I'll catch you next time. Peace.